Hey everybody, it's Chris Trinity here, and I am joined by two wonderful people. I'm joined by Roy Cowley, the founder of 3D Aesthetics, and I'm also joined by one of my favorite people in the world, and one of the most ambitious and driven people that I know, uh, and that's Charlotte Ward of Orchard Lee Aesthetics. Guys, thank you very much for joining me today. How are you both? Hi, good, thank you. How are you? Good, thanks, good. And Roy, how are yeah, you? Yeah, good, about thanks, yourself? Chris. Great, I'm good fantastic. Too. Great, fantastic. So what we're going to be discussing on this, uh, on, on this very, very short interview is um, we're just going to be basically getting a view from, uh, from Charlotte, who runs uh, a very, very successful clinic um, over uh, near Bath. And uh, we're going to be talking to her about how she's managed to navigate her way, uh, you know, through lockdowns, through, you know, the pandemic in order to basically run a really, really successful um, uh, aesthetic clinic. And what we're going to be talking to Roy about as well is how 3D aesthetics uh, devices have actually helped Charlotte to, uh, you know, to grow the business and to also grow her customer base exponentially. So first of all, um, let's start off with you, Charlotte. Um, if you could just find out a little bit information about yourself. Um, and can you just tell me a little bit about, you know, sort of how you got started in the aesthetics industry? Um, you know, and, you know, tell me a little bit about your home life as well. Yeah. Um, so my journey um, in the aesthetics industry um, started, it was a bit weird actually, um, I always had a keen interest in uh, medical tattooing because I have spent 13 years in the NHS and I used to work on a breast surgery ward um, and I always liked the idea of being able to do um, medical tattooing for breast cancer survivors. But to do that, I had to do a permanent makeup course. So I went and did that. And then somebody said to me, oh, why don't you do injectables? So I was like, okay, I'll do that. So I went on to do that. Um, three years later, here I am. Um, I started off working in a little room that we converted in my garage. Um, and now I have a huge clinic, um, which I'm very proud of. Um, we renovated it during lockdown, uh, the first lockdown, we did that. Um, so I've just worked my way up, really. Um, and then I've been looking at 3D lipo equipment for quite some time. Um, I've seen it in the aesthetics magazines. Um, so, yeah, I've been following them for a long time. And then I kind of took the plunge um, during the last lockdown. Um, I am a mum of three. I work... Well, I did work full time in the NHS up until September, but I work part time now as a nurse um, and I run my clinic alongside that. So um, I am crazy busy all of the time. Um, I don't know how I do it. I don't know how um, I deal with all the stress that I have, but I do it. And yeah, I've managed to um, make a huge success of my business um, and manage my kids on another job. So, sure. yeah, sure. Charlotte, can I ask, um, what 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 drives you? What what gets you up in the morning and and you know allows you to be able to you know manage all these you know juggle all these different balls in the air at the same time? Because obviously, being a mother, you know, working in the NHS, you know, only your own clinic as well, uh, you know, and you've got you know how how many staff members have you got there as well in in the business? Uh, there's six of us. Six. Now. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, how how do you you know how do you manage to juggle all of those balls? Um, I think I thrive on pressure um, and I have got a very, very high stress tolerance level. Um, and if I'm not constantly doing something, I get really bored um, and I kind of lose my motivation. So I just, yeah, I keep going all the time and doing something new to keep me going really. And I, if, I think if I didn't do that and I stopped, which I have done lately, because um, the clinic's been closed, um, I wouldn't be able to function, I don't think. I just enjoy being blessed. It's healthy for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The life, the life of a business owner, really, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I can, uh, here, here, I can, uh, I can go along if, with that as well. If you, yeah. don't, if you don't work hard, you'll, you'll never be able to reap the rewards. And I think mm. if I do it now while I can, mm. then I'll be able to enjoy later life with my kids and, you know, and relax a bit more, but that probably won't happen because that's just no, me. So. No. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right. So, 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 Charlotte, tell t- tell us um, a little bit about you know what what technology were you drawn to um, out of the you know the three D three D range um, and and why? why why were you drawn to that particular piece of, uh, um, piece of it was uh, initially the body contouring, so the Ultimate Pro. Um, our clients were always asking, was there sort of a a weight loss solution, but you know, I know it's not a weight loss solution. It's a body contouring machine, but I was looking at ways that we could help people improve the look of their bodies. They wanted to feel confident in their own bodies. And this machine does it all. I wanted a machine that did everything in one. I couldn't find a good one on the market that had won awards or would have good feedback. Um, so that's what drew me to it really Um, and then I found out about the business stimulation um, that 3D were offering and um, yeah and that's kind of what sold it to me really Um, and then we also got the hydrofacial uh, machine as well the Hydra 2 sorry Um, because we wanted to focus a lot more on skincare. I mean, we do injectables, but there's only so far you can go with the injectable side of things. Not everybody wants to do that. Um, So yeah, we wanted something that would make people feel better about themselves, look better, another anti-aging sort of uh, treatment. Um, So yeah, that's why why we went for it initially. Mm. Okay. Roy, can you tell us a little bit about why, um, you know, what is it about the, the smart buy scheme um, that has helped, uh, you know, uh, business owners like Charlotte, um, you know, basically, you know, t- take advantage and purchase their first, uh, their first, you know, their first 3D aesthetics device. What is it about that scheme and why have you structured that scheme in such a way that it, you know, it helps practitioners to you know very very easily you know bring in a you know a piece of capital equipment into their business and you know start you know doing uh, you know doing really really uh, exciting treatments. I think the thing is, as a business owner myself, you know, I, I always believe in not chasing the money. Okay, so if you're a, a business that's out there chasing the money, you don't make the right decisions. So when you start thinking about it from your client's perspective, whether it's the technology that you develop and work with, whether it's the business that you, the business model that you're working with, or the promotions, then you make you come to some good decisions. And let's be honest, you know what's happened is that if the wind is blowing in a, in the different direction, you've got to tilt, tilt your sails as a business in order to reach the destination. And that's what we did. So during lockdown, I, I thought long and hard about the business model going forward, long and hard about you know what really what kind of appetite people would have for spending money. And it was a very simple solution. The solution was create a product that was cheaper, um, create a scheme that meant they didn't pay anything for six months, so there was no barrier to getting it. And therefore, what they can do is that they can introduce a machine, excite their clients, have a reason to go back out and reach out to their clients, um, but really not have the pressure of making that heavy financial decision. What you're actually doing is you're paying £50 per month for a period of six months um, and generating thousands. And that's the key. Um, we've sold over 400 devices since last lockdown. We've been extremely successful. Um, we've trained over a thousand people because we've changed our business model with Microsoft Teams. But more importantly, we've made a difference to so many businesses. And that really to me is what I'm proud of seeing someone like Charlotte, for example, who's a shining example, but one of many of people who've made a massive success of being able to expand their businesses at a time when others are contracting. Um, and let's be honest, you know, you've seen the story with Charlotte, 200 pound investment, 36,000 pounds return. Phenomenal. She's expanded her business, employed more staff and has gone through three lockdowns and thankfully bought three sets of machines off me. So it must be working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want another lockdown, Charlotte. <laughs> So Charlotte, can I ask you, um, why did you choose lockdown to, to, to make that investment in your business? What, what was it? Because obviously, as Roy has quite rightly said, a lot of people, you know, they just, you know, they bury their head in the sand and, you know, they just, you know, hu- you know, run and hide, uh, you know, during, you know, during the past 12 months. But you 
basically doubled down, invested in your business, invested in new devices, invested in marketing with us as well. Um, and, uh, you know, you basically just chose to go all in on your business. How, how did you make that decision? And, you know, sort of what, what inspired you to do that? Um, Hopefully I, by marketing. It, well, yeah, that was very helpful. Thank you, Chris. Um, I've always been a bit of a risk taker. Um, and I think in business, if you're not willing to take risks, you don't get very far. Um, and deep down, I knew that if I worked really, really hard, it would work. And thankfully it has. Um, but also I've got a huge client base now. Um, and it's all things that people have been asking for. Um, we get inquiries all the time asking, oh, do you do this? Do you do that? And I'm like, oh, no, I need to get another machine. Um, yeah, so I think if I know that I have to make something work, I will make it work. Even I if think it one of the things, you. sorry to interrupt, Charlotte, but I, you mentioned a big word there, and it was risk. Um, now, the one thing I think that is really key to our campaign and the Smart Buy Scheme, as it's now called, is that we de-risk that investment because yeah. you've got to look at it and you've got to say, well, okay, I'm paying fifty pounds a month. The treatment can generate me one hundred and fifty. Mm. Um, you know, a third of a treatment is going to pay for it. I'm yeah. not saying that you just get it because it's on the scheme, but it okay. de-risks. You, you've, you've made that decision. You want a body machine. You make the decision. You look into the company, do all your due diligence. But what we've done is we've made that, sim that, that decision simpler for you because we de risk the one barrier that most people would have. What yeah. if I don't pay six hundred pounds this month? Well, you don't have to. So, you know, yeah, that's, yeah, that's been a major help actually. And I think if I hadn't have had that option, I wouldn't have taken yep. taken machines off of you guys because yep. we are in lockdown. We've been in and out of lockdown so many times and it's a massive financial um, commitment to make. But if you've got that six months where you do pay your 50 pounds a month, then you know that you've got time to um make things work and i think that's really helpful and a, a lot of other companies wouldn't have done that no. um and i think it's fantastic because even through lockdown i've been able to get these machines you know very very easily when we've not had the biggest income coming in like we normally would even though we've done really well um yeah so i, I think that has really really helped and that's what made me kind of go for the machines as well. That was kind of the final selling point for me, I think. I think that one of the things is, you know, failing to plan is planning to fail, you know, and this is one of the things that, you know, we're going to start to go out to the marketplace with now because we feel that there is a time mid April where things are going to open up again. And as we know, with aesthetics, they can, or it usually bounces back extremely strong, especially for the result driven treatments, body, uh, laser hair removal, you know, they're probably the top two. Um, so this is the time to plan. And that's what I'm kind of encouraging people to start thinking about, uh, you know, at the end of the day, turnovers, vanity, um, profit, sanity, and cash is king. And it's keeping hold of that cash, but investing in a machine and something going forward, that's going to give you that return. And what we've set out is like a six month plan that will enable us, um, you know, to, to really, not not look at it as a cash flow issue as something which is going to cost you money but actually it's an opportunity and yeah. moving on from that chris you know the one thing i'd like to say next is this is when it then becomes more of the clinic owner's onus is the key to success is activity right so you've got a machine you've had the training and this is the best time to do that because you don't want to cut into your operational time but then really the next key is along with our marketing we have seasonal campaigns that we produce and we're producing spring now um, is really you guys implementing and using that six months time to really generate cash flow. And Chris, what I want to do is pass this back to you now, because, you know, certainly for us post lockdown in our own clinic, you know, we took in the region of our first month back was on 3D LiPo was uh, 27,000 on Trilogy Ice was 15,000, but 44% of that was through Chris's introduction with the Facebook marketing. So it isn't just about the machines and getting them, it's about implementing a strategy to really make that pay. And you know, if I was on the smart buy scheme, you know, I'd have 
turned over over £100,000 before even paying anything towards the machine. So, Chris, um, maybe just give a little bit of input on how you've helped both Charlotte and my business from a marketing perspective. Sure. So what's really important about this is, number one, obviously having amazing equipment, you know, that is going to deliver really, really great results for your customers. <clears throat> that's the priority. Yeah, that's the first thing that you need to have. The second thing you need to have is you need to have some sort of structure or strategy in place, which is going to yield you like inquiries from customers consistently. Okay. The problem that I find that a lot of clinic owners have is they will make uh, an investment in a device, um, you know, or a range of devices. And then, you know, thinking about acquiring customers is, you know, is a complete afterthought. Mm -hmm. However, I would always say, and, you know, this is one thing I have to big up Charlotte for this, right? One thing I have to say is you have to have the vision to say, right, how can I do both at the same time? How can I invest in a new piece of equipment and acquire customers? And that's exactly what Charlotte did. Yeah. Now, the thing is, is that when you're thinking about acquiring customers, the first thing you need to be thinking about is the offer. So what offer can I make customers to get them in the business? That doesn't necessarily have to be like a discounted offer. It doesn't have to be, have to be 50% off, right? But it has to be something that's enticing enough to get the clients to, to want to basically raise their hand and identify themselves uh, you know, as a potential customer for your business, right? So that's the first thing. And then the second thing is, uh, you know, where are you going to place that offer? So in other words, you know, where do your customers spend their time and attention? Is it Facebook? Is it, you know, are they reading magazines? Are they watching TV? Are they listening to the radio, right? Wherever your customers are spending their time and their attention, right, is where you basically want to place your offer and your, you know, your, your marketing message ultimately, right? And that's what's worked so well for Charlotte is that Charlotte knew that her target audience were on Facebook and Instagram. So what we did is we put together an offer that would draw that would draw customers into the clinic for the first time and to try their first, you know, to have their first treatment. And then it's then Charlotte's responsibility to then be able to upsell and cross sell those clients. So just to just to just to explain what I mean by that. And Charlotte, you can talk a little bit about the training that we did with you as well, the sales training. Right. But upselling is getting bringing a person in for a single treatment and then selling them a course or a package of treatments. And cross-selling is taking them from, you know, let's just say they're having a body contouring treatment, uh, you know, fat freezing or whatever it may be. Um, and then also cross-selling them over to, you know, the hydro facial, for example, the, or the hydro two. Yeah. Um, and Charlotte, you did that really, really well. And you did that ex extremely skillfully, I have to say, um, with your team where, you know, you got, you got, you know, clients in, uh, you know, for, uh, you know, 3D lipo treatment, um, and then you were able to cross sell them the facial, uh, facial treatment as well. So can you talk about how a little bit about how you managed to do that in, in the clinic and, you know, sort of what worked for you? Yeah. Um, so we initially um, did the sales training with you um, and you went through um, all of the strategies with each staff member we did lots of role play, which made them uh, very uncomfortable, but <laughs> they did it. And I said to them, you have to do it because this is your job. We need to get people in. Um, and this is why we are here to get people in. Um, so we we did the, the training. We implemented um, the script, the way we contact people. We were getting on the telephone. I remember we spent a Friday evening in clinic once and we spent three hours here and we generated £6,000 worth of work just wow. for three hours. And I said, if we hadn't have got on the phone for three hours on that Friday evening, we wouldn't have made that money. And I said, this mm. is why it's important to implement the training that you have had. Because if you don't, you won't get the sales and you won't make money, you know? Um, and the staff realized that after a while. And I think because we tried all of the um, machines ourselves, and I'm a really firm believer in this, if something I buy works, then I, I, I believe in it. And so do the staff. So if you believe that something works, you sell it. And that's what we've done. Um, we have done loads of cross-selling. Um, I've even put my staff on commission rates now if they sell 
um, a particular package. Um, I've now set targets that we must sell, I don't know, 10 um, power sculpt um, courses or five hydrofacials. And I've mapped out how much we will make, the profit, you know, everything like that. And I think if you've got a plan and you've implemented all of those sales strategies, then that's how you become successful in what you do. Do you know what? It's, it's music to my ears, what you're saying, Charlotte. I mean, as a, as a businessman, myself, you know, everything, the results we get are on the back of a strategy, whether it's this month where February was always going to be a challenging month. We mapped out a strategy. Uh, we gave a roadmap to our, our BDMs, business development managers, as to which track to follow uh, from a cash flow perspective, from lots of different perspectives. And guess what? It's working to plan. And I, and I think, you know, this is great to hear. I mean, you talk about some, some great stuff there, Chris. And I, I just don't think an awful lot of clinics are business minded enough to have strategies, especially when it comes to selling. You know, they buy a machine and, you know, that's where the thought process stops. Mm. You know, you talk about upselling, you talk about cross selling. You know, I work for McDonald's in my youth and, and how many times have you gone in there and they're saying, is that a large and would you like yeah. an apple pie with that? You know, that yeah. isn't just an accident. That's a training program that's been implemented to maximize their business and that spend with that client. So yeah. smart stuff, guys. Like to hear it. Yeah. And I'll also add to that, if you don't mind. Um, if I hadn't have got in contact with Chris, I don't think that I would have been as successful because I didn't have that extra little push that I needed. Um, yeah, no, just, I get it. Yeah, and I am very thankful to Chris for that. And I mean, I've always been a business-minded person and not many nurses are business-minded, but it has really helped my business and me personally, for my personal development especially, to be able to come more bit, become more business-minded. Um, yeah, so I am, I am very grateful. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> oh, Charlotte, you're going to make me emotional. So, so we were talking a little while back about, you know, some of the, the things that you implemented, but from a marketing perspective, and it just describes, I don't know if you've heard of ADA, attention, interest, desire, action. You know, any marketing that you're doing, and you describe this very well yourself, just in the way that you did stuff, attention grabber, whatever that might be on Facebook um, or advertising, interest and desire is created through your description of the product and what's in it for them. And action is the call to action that you create. Basic business um, principles works every time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Charlotte, can we talk a little bit about, I just want to hear about some of the results because this is really what just, you know, absolutely blows my mind. You know, I saw there was an article about you in Professional Beauty, but what I want to talk about is I just want to find out from you some of the, some of the juicy results, basically. You know, how, you know, how did the 3D Smart Buy Scheme um, directly impact your business in terms of turnover, revenue, and new customers? Yeah, so... Um... The results have been absolutely amazing. Um, and for me personally, actually, on the power sculpt machine, um, I've suffered for the last nearly 11 years um, with a condition called diastasis recti. And it's basically where your abdominal muscles separate through pregnancy. Um, and they never went back to uh, their normal position. And I tried everything, personal trainers, the gym, I everything I've tried I can't even do a sit up because my muscles are that weak so I tried the power sculpt machine and after just four sessions it had significantly reduced the gap between my stomach muscles um, and now my stomach is completely flat um, which is it's a massive thing for me actually and it really boosted my confidence because I felt that I couldn't even like wear a bikini and I've always been a skinny person anyway, but because of that, I just felt really uncomfortable in my own body. And now I'd quite happily put a bikini on because it's fixed that problem. And I don't look pregnant all the time, which is good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to be yeah. honest, Charlotte, it's my number one machine as well. I'm on it every day at the yeah. moment. So uh, yeah. I, love it. I, yeah. I love it. As well. I love it yeah. as well. Um, yeah, so the body contouring machine, that's been a massive hit. Um, everybody loves that machine. We've had phenomenal results just after a few sessions. Um, the hydrofacial machine, that's been really popular um, because everybody wants to invest in their skin now. And 
we've kind of made our own sort of tailored facials with with that machine um, alongside our products that we use. So we use um, Obagi products and IS clinical products, and we found that they work brilliantly together as well for a more luxury facial. Um, for our sort of more basic facials, we use the 3D products because we love them too. But a lot of our clients do purchase the other skincare products that are prescription grade um, for particular skin um, complaints such as rosacea, acne, that sort of thing. So we can really, really tailor it to them. And I think that's really important when you do run an aesthetics clinic, especially when it's medical, um, medical grade stuff you need to be able to offer that to people. Um, and that's what makes us stand out um, above the rest actually around our local area is because nobody else does that. So um, I, I am, um, yeah, I, I am totally really agree good. with you. The, the, the key is, I mean, let's be honest, if you're getting all these customers through the door, you're spending all this money with Chris, if the machines don't work, what's gonna happen? You've never got a long-term sustained business yeah. model. Yeah. So results yeah. have to be kind of like a, a given. Um, yeah. Certainly moving on from that, I totally agree with you is that that's what our platforms, that's what I'm passionate about. That's why I created 3D. There is no one technology that does everything, you know, for anti-aging, for body contouring, hence the platforms that we use for face and for body. You know, mm. I admire anyone who thinks out of the box and develops their own tailored program, a bit like, for example, let's say the Dr. Lear bespoke anti-aging facial. That might involve four of her favorite components the other advantage of that is called Blue Ocean Marketing Strategy because they cannot compare that facial to the high street because you've yeah. created it, you own it, and therefore the price point can't be compared. Always say that, you know, create bespoke treatments, follow the bespoke program. It's, you know, certainly uh, standing your business in great stead if you do. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. For sure. Um, and um, Charlotte, could I just ask, um, you know, the, the, there are a lot of other, um, there are a lot of other, um, you know, ladies out there who 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 want to step into the aesthetics industry, um, you know, who or who want to be as successful as you. Um, can I just ask? I mean, why would you recommend to them uh, the, uh, you know, the three D aesthetics uh, smart buy scheme? Um, because for me personally, from day one, I have had such a fantastic experience with three D. Um, customer service the training was outstanding it's been easy to access um, the machines work um, if you've ever got a problem somebody will get back to you and I think that that to me is a massive thing if you're going to invest in equipment from one company and I will stay loyal to 3D because I love their machines and that's why I've bought more of them and I'll probably end up with the whole range soon enough I'll be on the phone. I'll phone you after this interview, okay? <laughs> Actually, listen, I think you just raised a very important point, and I don't take that lightly. You know, at the end of the day, we don't take for granted the fact that you've bought several machines. You know, we, we on a day-to-day-to-day, -to -day -to -day, month month-to-month basis, up our ante on every level. And what you just mentioned is extremely important. My experience with this industry is that most of the companies, or a lot of the companies out there, are just chasing money. They've got no passion for the industry, They've got no uh, backup in respect to engineering, customer service. You know, we've got a 10,000 square foot facility here with over 30 employees, engineers down to customer service. We're ISO 13485 accredited, which means that we have to perform with a very high standard of quality assurance, you know, yeah. and we're financially secure as an organization. There's so many traps out there with companies and I've heard so many horror stories that it's as much about the company that's behind the devices and the investment that they put in to helping you uh, as it is the machine. And uh, you know, you've described all the things there that you know, are important to me. And at the end of the day, if you're passionate about your business, your machines and everything that you do, the money follows. If you, yeah. if you offer good backup support, and we do, you know, we 100% yeah. do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Roy, can I just ask a little bit, a couple of questions, just specifically about the um, uh, about the smart buy scheme. OK, so, you know, there, there are a couple of, you know, almost like a almost like a, a mantra that you have or, you know, like an action plan that you have. And there's sort of four steps to it. 
Um, and the first step to it um, uh, we spoke about earlier was, you know, uh, failing to plan is planning to fail. Can you tell me a little bit about that and sort of what, what, what that means to you as a business owner? Well, what that you know, means to the industry? absolutely. And, I, you know, I mentioned to you earlier that, you know, I feel a bit tired at the moment because it's been a year of, you know, planning, but it's not been following a plan for the year. It's been following a plan for that week. You know, there's been so many twists and turns along the way. But all aspects of your business, you have to plan, whether it's marketing, whether it's a budget, you know, and if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. It's as simple as that. You know, you've got to have and create the steps, you know, you create your end position, whether it's a figure of turnover, whether it's number of courses sold, you create a plan and you create the steps to reach that plan. And honestly, you know, that's, that's business, you know, and that's the difference between somebody who's on the metal and someone that isn't and someone that wins and someone who fails. It's mm. simple as that. It's a basic foundation. Absolutely, absolutely. Roy, so the second part of your, you know, sort of ethos or mantra is, you know, if you can't adjust the direction of the wind, simply adjust your sails to reach your destination. Can you elaborate on that a little bit more and, you know, sort of t tell us what you mean by that? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's something which is, at the end of the day, this whole pandemic's taught us is that you can't swim against the tide. You know, I mean, we've got a situation that is presented to us, it's put in front of us. We can't make it go away. We can't change it. We can't, you know, go back to work, whatever. So what it means is that if you really just stick to doing what you do every day and expect to get the same results, you're going to fail, right? So in effect, what you've got to do is you've got to look at this whole thing differently. For our business, we looked at our training model. We didn't want to be going doing on-site training. We do remote training. Uh, we do remote sales. Uh, we effectively created the smart buy scheme. So simply, you know, if we can't change the wind direction, what I mean is you've just got to tilt the sales of the business to ensure that you arrive at your destination. You know, again, it's kind of linked to proper planning, I guess, but mm. it's certainly something that the clinics have got to think the same way. Mm. You know, things are not going to be the same. You've got to adjust the way you do things. And then the, the 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 third saying that you have is that uh, you know, and and this is this is something that you know is is spoken about quite a lot. But turnover is vanity, profit is sanity, and cash is king. Can you explain what you mean by that? But you know, if, if you explain it to Charlotte, obviously, as she is, a, you know, she is a clinic owner. So if you can explain it, sort of, you know, in the context, you know, to to a business owner like Charlotte, for example. Well, I think I think it's very simple that you know one thing this pandemic's taught us as well is that you run out of cash, you, you've had it, all right. So, you know, I became, you know, a lot of people said to me, "Well, you're lucky you've got a big business." Well, guess what? Big businesses have got big overheads, mm. right? Yeah. Um, so, uh, so, so you've got to learn very quickly to preserve your cash. Um, and, and the whole saying, what it means is turnover is vanity. You know, I could turn over 10 million pounds and be spending 11 million and losing money. So turnover is, is not a measure of success. The fact you're making a profit is an indication of a certain level of sanity. You're making profit. But you know what? Cash is king. And that is, you know, having that bank balance. And that means, I suppose, relating to clinics is that at the moment it's all about managing cash. It's all about preserving cash readdressing the overheads it's amazing how much when things are all ticking along nicely you know when when you look at things closely in these times how much waste you might be you know going through so it's a good time to reevaluate the business and uh, just ensure that uh, your cost structure is is there um, but equally you know it's all about cash is king as far as this is concerned is using a scheme like ours where you are paying virtually nothing and generating a lot of cash over a six month period. You know, and that's what I think it relates to more than anything. You know, you're in control of your own destiny here. You can introduce a very good hourly revenue service with very little investment and generate positive cash flow over the next six months. That's the key. Okay, and finally, the last, the last, uh, the last part of your, uh, your, your mantra is uh, the key to success is activity. Yeah. What do you mean by that? I guess you may, maybe you kind of touched on that a little bit earlier when you said that you yeah. know a lot of people are burying their head in the sand, you know, sort of like ostriches. But can you explain that <laughs> the key to success is activity? Yeah, well, you all know ostrich, Charlotte. You'd be pleased to hear. So uh, <laughs> for sure, and neither am I. Uh, the, the thing about it is, is it's very all very well and good that you know we've created this scheme. You know, Charlotte's decided to take it on board. We provided marketing materials and assistance, so we just just leave it down to them. Um, 
But really the whole thing that makes it work is that the activity that the clinic owner puts behind it. Now that activity is the same with anything. You know, if you try 10 things, one thing might work. If you try nothing, nothing's going to work, right? Mm -hmm. So really in life, the key to success is activity. You know, these people that say, I was going to do that. You know, I thought about that idea 10 years ago. Yeah, but you didn't do anything about it, did you? Mm. So, you know, this is the key to successful people is that they are resilient and that they keep trying things. Um, and it is about the activity. If you increase the activity, the success will come. Right, Charlotte? Absolutely. I think resilience is a, a must for any successful business owner um, because you, you have to be resilient and you know, but that comes part and parcel of being a nurse as well. You've got to be resilient. So. Absolutely, it does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think the other thing as well is work, probably another little saying is, you know, work smarter, not harder as well. Yeah, I, think, I have learned to do that. Yeah, I bet you have, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. But I think, you know, Chris adds a lot there. Sorry, carry on, Charlotte. Um, yeah, just to add to that, that's where I was going wrong. And Chris will know all about this. Um, I was working seven days a week and... I was working too hard, if anything, I'm not smarter. And now I work a lot less hours. I work school hours a couple of days a week at the clinic. I work my two long days at the hospital. I'm at home for my kids at the weekend. I'm at home at bedtime, never got to do that before. And I think because of Chris's help, I've learned to do that and to work smarter and you know, not harder. I'll add to that then, and you've just described another favorite saying of mine, Proper planning prevents piss poor performance. <laughs> there you go. We'll finish on that. We'll finish on that one. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Guys, this is this, this is definitely by far um, one of the best stories to certainly come out of the pandemic. Um, you know, and the, you know, obviously, and the hardship that this industry has faced over the past twelve months as well. So, um, you know, first of all, you know, I want to really thank Roy, uh, you know, for you know putting together you know such an amazing scheme that's allowing. Uh, practitioners and you know business owners who are you know who who are driven you know to succeed um you know i want to thank royce for putting together that scheme you know to help uh, you know to help those clinic owners and also i want to thank charlotte as well mostly charlotte for taking action and just you know for for not you know just you know sort of burying your head in the sand but you know actually taking action and planning things out and saying that you know i'm going to succeed no matter what i'm going to you know push through every obstacle that comes my way, you know, through lockdown and pandemic, I'm going to make sure that I succeed, you know, no matter what, by any means necessary. So I just want to thank both of you very much. I think that, you know, one thing that has just amazed me is that, you know, businesses like mine and Charlotte's have been able to not only survive, but thrive mm. in, with all the challenges that we've got. And it just goes to show that, you know, with that proper planning, you can create and, and success and thrive at a time when a lot of other people aren't. So yeah, it is great to see Charlotte that you've used my scheme to make it achieve for your business what I always intended it to do. Uh, yeah. I congratulate you on its implementation and for the success. And I feel very proud, you know, when I see that it has uh, enabled you to grow your business, support your family, and employ more people and, you know, have a big business that no doubt will stand you in good stead for the future. Yeah, well, thank well you. Well done. <laughs> yeah. I need a bigger premises now. I can't, hey. sort, that out for you. <laughs> I can't sort that out for you. You're going to have to talk I've to already got, Yeah, I've already got my eye on one opposite where I am. So, um, yeah, all good. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, well, how many Fantastic. people are thinking of expanding their business right now? You know, exactly. You know, mm, you know we haven't crazy. even got the door to open. Imagine what, what, how well you'd do if you could open your doors. Mm. Yeah. I know, I just, it needs to happen soon. It does for all of our mental health, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. But everybody, it's... just if you're watching this and you, you're inspired by Charlotte, don't act when you reopen. Now's the time to act. Now's the time to implement it. Get trained. Uh, there is time, there is availability. Um, and then we can help you implement a strategy to make this next six months work super well for you. And mm -hmm. no doubt with Chris's assistance as well. So, you know, it's a team effort between all three of us, whether it's myself, a clinic owner, uh, and Chris as well. So let's use this time productively and bounce back strong and be positive. Yeah, great, great words, Roy. Thank you very much, guys. See you soon. I'll be speaking with you. Take care, guys. Bye. <laughs>